welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here in Lagoon Beach with uh, Minister Darren Peters, all the way from uh, from where anyway. Johannesburg. From Joburg. Alberton. Alberton. Uh, here for for a mission. So you got something to tell us. Can you introduce yourself first of all to everybody who's watching us now? Yes, good afternoon everybody. Uh, the name is Daryl Peters from Johannesburg, Alberton. Recently decided to take a project down here in Cape Town. We've just been here for a year. In Milnerton. In Milnerton? Yes. Uh, not only in terms of a workplace, in terms of also ministry in the kingdom, you've been also assigned to serve God. Yes. Uh, would you mind tell us uh, your story about uh, how you met uh, this uh, incredible man, the Lilles of Alile, the Rock of Ages, Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Yes, uh, my, my Christian walk started a couple of years ago. Mm. I think just uh, when myself and my wife uh, decided to get married, which was in 1993, 1994. 1993, 1994. Oh, you guys are Madala in terms of marriage, eh? Yeah, so... Relationship, man. Yeah, really? well, this year it's been 26 years. Oh, my On goodness. the 20th of September, so... Um, yeah, well done, man. Well blessed. done. Thank you. You know, uh, you know really I have to congratulate you because... Yes. Uh, it's not given to everybody when it comes. I know it's not an issue for today, no, no, but I'm but so astonished to, to to hear that over over 25 years, like uh, yeah. almost a quarter of the cake that you've been together with uh, your lovely wife. Absolutely. It's not be given to everybody because we see divorces uh, oh, around the world. People are getting married in January. Somewhere there, April, they say, you know what? I've had enough. I was always making a joke with one of my brothers. You see, yeah. you are having a Chinese marriage, you know. I Some products, you, papers, you understand, yeah. uh, the, the Hong Kong one, mm. so it, they're, they're getting involved to the marriage which is expired. Yes. They already yes. know that let, as we're getting married yeah, we now. We're just doing it short term. Yeah, short term. Yeah. Mm. So, but uh, well done to you, Moose. No, thank you. Thank mm. you. It's, yeah, it's, marriage is not easy as well, and, and um, it's, a, it's a road that takes a lot of encouragement, a lot of mm. communication. Yeah. And uh, the one thing that I have learned that it's a, it's a two way relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's give and take. Yeah. Take and give. And that's what um, I think. Take what is, and give. Give and it. take. That's it. Mm. I think that is what 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 made um, our marriage so successful. Yeah. But the most important factor for us is we've always had God at the center point of our of our marriage. Mm -hmm. We've always had God at the center point of our lives and, yes. and in our home. And that's we just made a decision to allow God to come and live um, mm -hmm. with us and in our home, yes. in our marriage and, and try and keep it as simple as possible mm -hmm. um, to where we are today. I know it's not the topic for today. Today yes. it's all about the testimonial reason why we are doing this uh, yes. recording live here in Lagoon Beach. As you can see around, people are enjoying the weather in South Africa, in Cape Town, yes. enjoying December time. But uh, in few words, can you tell us what makes your marriage be successful and you, two of your wife, you and your wife, hold and stick on that? What the secret? Yeah, I think, I think um, after the decision that we've made to, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not, not I think I know, mm. um, the Lord put this passion on our heart um, and this calling we, we still believe today mm. is to counsel people yeah. with with um, in terms of what what it takes mm. to have a successful marriage yeah. and also premarital counseling has always been part of our of our calling in terms of the the ministry and because of that we went through a lot of challenges we never had a smooth road mm -hmm. but those challenges God taught us how to deal with them mm. you know and what makes our, our marriage successful yeah. and even now it's not that we don't have disagreements every now and again yeah especially that one the vital the vital part of our, our marriage and the success part of our marriage mm -hmm. has always been communication 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 keep the doors of communication open mm. it doesn't matter if it's daily if it's weekly mm. but you have to keep the communication channels open in terms of honesty respect mm. Those are the two vital, vital, vital... Honesty, respect, uh, communication. Communication. Those are the master keys. Those are the, the master keys that unlock everything else. Yeah. They yeah. really unlock 
everything else in terms of a marriage, in terms of a relationship. Because mm -hmm. when you come together, a typical example, we decide, right, what do we have planned for this month? Yeah. And we don't find that happening with, within our marriages today. Mm -hmm. You find that the husband says, hey, you know what, I've got plans, I'll see you next week. Or I've got plans, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh -huh. You find the wife says, hey, I'm busy with my work. Yeah, I don't know what time I'll be back from work. Mm -hmm. And that is not a marriage. Because one is pulling to the left, the other one is pulling to the right. Uh -huh. Whereas marriage is communion, taking part. Mm. In other words, we have to both take part of each other's lives. Yo, oh, I you think have to. <laughs> You have to. I think that we're really, really blessed to, to hear this testimonial when it comes to the marriage. You know, I was very curious, uh, our viewers around the world, that uh, yes. to hear that uh, I'm dealing with somebody who's, uh, we call him South Africa Madala, when it, come, when it comes. But, uh, yes, uh, I'm with uh, the man of God, Minister Peters, all the way from Johannesburg. And uh, we would like to hear uh, more of what the Lord has been uh, doing in his life. Uh, we got a really, really great testimonial that we would like to share with you as you are watching us right now. I believe that uh, uh, after this show, you will be really, really best, blessed and uh, the Lord will be do good to you. So I don't want to take much of your time. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Joshua Boloa, and uh, I want to spend more, a little bit time with uh, the men of God to tell us really what happened. You've been telling us uh, the journey you have with the Lord. Yes. And in short, are you regretting to be in, in the Lord? No, 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 no. Was it a bad decision sure. or are you very feeling sorry that uh, <laughs> I'm in Christ at your age anyway? Because people are say, ah, no, no, this guy is Madala. Why must I give my life to Jesus no. all the way? Are you being regretting? You, you, no, you know, um, Joshua, it's, it's uh, God has his time for everything. And that's mm. one thing that I've learned. Yeah. If I, if I, I had to learn. Mm. Because not all of us will, will come to, to know the Lord at an early age. Mm. Simply because life is not in our own hands. Yeah. God controls everything. And He knows what tomorrow holds. Yes. You know, so I, I honestly, I cannot say that I regret coming to God at an, at an early age. Mm. Um, because it's been a learning curve. There's, there's nobody that can really say, I, I live a sinful life. Mm -hmm. Because... Mm. The Word of God says, for all have sinned and come short yeah. of the glory of, of, God. The glory of God. And yeah. Christianity, what, what my, my road has taught me, mm. is a daily process mm -hmm. where we deal with every issue as we go along. Mm -hmm. You will not ever, there's no human being that can say, oh, you know what, I have fulfilled the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Because then he shouldn't be walking on the earth. Yeah. Because according to the word, if you fulfilled the promises of God, you yeah. should be in heaven. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. that is that is just my perception. But mm -hmm. because um, we firmly believe in 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 the word of God yeah. and following God's purpose for your life mm. is the most important key any Christian can have mm. to make a success of their lives. Any important decision that you can take. Even now, we are watching us. I don't know wherever you are. Yes. You can still do it. Give a love to Jesus. Is can change your life. Yes. He's there for you. In the Revelation 3 verse uh, 20, the Bible says, it's still busy knocking up until today. Yes. It's up to you to open your heart. Every day. Come and dinner with him. You will never be the same. You will there never. are some of the stuff you can't do it by yourself. You can't get rid of it by yourself, but yes. you just need to give and surrender life to Jesus and yes. believe in Him that uh, He is the Savior and you have eternal life. Because this life is uh, we, we're going to pass by. It's going to pass we're gonna by. Pass by. The Word of God says this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. when just by, by reading that scripture, mm -hmm. we know that it will come to an end. Mm -hmm. But as, as uh, Papa Joshua said now, is it's never too late mm. to make that decision and say, Lord, I can't do this on my own. Uh -huh. And that is one of the reasons why we are sitting here today um, doing this live recording and having this testimony. Mm. Because even as a Christian, knowing God and having that relationship with God, mm. we still make wrong decisions. Mm. We still make wrong choices yeah. because we have to get to the point of trusting God completely. Amen. Handing everything. If, if I say everything, I've had to go through that and mm -hmm. that is part of my testimony today, mm -hmm. which we will go through. Let's go straight to it, men of God. Yes, yes. And uh, I think uh, 
Can you tell us what's really happening? What's really going on? We are here in Lagoon Beach where everything started. Yes. You yes. left your house with your wife, come have a fresh air, and then suddenly you decide to take your phone call, walk straight to the beach that we are seeing right now, yes. while people are enjoying, and yeah. then you disappear. Yeah, so what I'd, what I'd like to do is, is take it a step back. Yes. Um, because the, the point that I made earlier on is that as a Christian, mm. we, we have this, and the human nature comes in yeah. every day because you've got a job, you've yeah. got a house, you've got a car, you've got a wife, you've got kids, and so you think that you are in control of your life, mm, mm, you know, mm. or you believe as a, mm. as a human, your human nature, or the world, let me put it this way, yes. the world tells you that you are in control of uh -huh. your life uh -huh. because you've got a job, you've got a house, you know, we've got all these pleasures of the earth. Mm. So you believe that you are in control. Mm. And coming to that point in, in terms of making the decision for us to come to Cape Town, you know, to, to take the, the job opportunity here. We've been through a year where everything has been, has been very smooth. Mm -hmm. But there came this time that, that led us to, well, that led me to this, that yeah. you feel that there's something missing. Because you know when you were Christian that mm. God is no longer in control. Because every decision... Actually, when you take a driver's seat, yes. you think that I'm the, I'm the captain, I'm the pilot. That's it. I don't need anybody. No, because I've got it all. Me. I've got it all. I've got yes. everything under control. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. I've got my plans. I'll be here in Cape Town mm -hmm. for two years, maybe three years. Then I'll go back to Johannesburg. Mm. And uh, that's when God came and just overturned the entire apple cart mm -hmm. because he said I know the plans I have for you mm -hmm. that is God's word yeah. and my plans had nothing to do with God mm -hmm. with God's plans yeah, that's true. and when we when we come to the day of the 14th of November mm -hmm. 2019 that is when I realized that I am no longer in control of my life mm. because if I was in control of my life, where would I be? Mm. Because God has to be in control of my life. Yes. God has to be in control of everything that we do. Mm. The Bible says we cannot serve man and God. And God yeah. You have to make a decision. We went through the time of study. Remember the, the three days we had? Yes. And there was a preaching that... Uh, the prophet came and shared with us yes. and he asked the question who are you serving mm. who are you serving yeah and i had to ask myself exactly the same question who am i serving am i serving my job mm. am i serving my my salary mm -hmm. um, am i serving my finances am, am i serving my possessions because it's all about possessions yes. Yes. Who, who am i serving mm. and that is where this all started and on the 14th of November everything just fell apart mm. we came I got in the car with my wife we drove to to Lagoon Beach where we are here today and uh, we sat in the car and I said to her I need to make this phone call mm -hmm. and uh, I got out the car took my phone and uh, was busy making a phone call but the line was busy mm. and then at that particular time, I remember throwing the phone into the sea and I started walking into the ocean because Yo. I cannot even now, that phase was just, to me it seemed like I, I just have to give up mm. because I, I am no longer in control and I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm. Circumstances have taken over. Yeah. I've made wrong decisions. Everything fall apart. Everything fall, fall apart. apart. Mm. I've made wrong decisions. I've made wrong choices. Mm. And how am I going to explain this to my wife and my children? Because mm. as a husband, it's your responsibility. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. And I found myself walking into this Atlantic Ocean mm. with the short sleeve shirt, full clothes, everything. And that's where everything started changing. Man of God, you know, it's, it seems to be strange. After the whole years of experience with God, and uh, you've seen a lot, and God has uh, richly blessed you, 
And uh, you, as you said, you have taken a driver's seat in your life. Yes. Or, I mean, for your life that's okay, let me just move around, coming here. I mean, you deciding by yourself. Yes. And Not then suddenly, God, yes. without consulting God, that's the main issue as well. Without consulting God. And then things are changing. Yes. Falling apart. Now you thought that this is the end. Yes. By walking through, what was in your mind? As you're walking through to the sea and you find yourself in, what happened? What happened to me at that point in time was just, I said, I had a conversation with God saying that, mm. I know I've made a mistake with, with me not consulting you and I cannot go back right now mm. to fix those mistakes yeah. because you were not part of, of the decisions yeah. that I made. Yeah. I made it you by know, myself. I made those decisions. I had my own counsel. Yes, I, I made those decisions by myself. Mm. So right now I, I do not feel that I am worthy in, in any way yeah. of any questions or, or any discussions or any didn't even know how I'm going to approach God and say Lord I really have made a mistake mm. I, I need you to guide me or I need some form of forgiveness mm. or guarantee and yeah. that was the decision that came to mind you know what I, I firmly believe I just need to end it here let me just hand it over because I've made all these mistakes that I know I won't be able to fix mm. and I do not feel confident enough mm. to say Lord come and help me fix this mm. so now you know it's so strange people may ask questions but he's a pastor yes. he's a man of God yes. but how dare he try to commit suicide yes. and his life just like that he was been preaching as faith and faith but now now he, exactly, he no, exactly. Men of God is indicating that most of the preachers that we see on the pulpit, mm. some of them they are not real, they are not yes. original, they are faking, Correct. showing off that they are everything fine, yes. but forgetting that behind the behind the, the scenes, behind the scenes as a pastor, but a yes. human being, they also go to challenges. It's and us believers, members, they don't see that. We don't see this that. prophet is wearing suit, is nice, having cars and so on, but yes. they do not understand and realize that they are also human beings. They, they do not show what, what I believe we are sharing today. Yeah. And as much as it is personal, mm. it is also an experience. But most importantly, it's a learning exercise that we need to share Amen. with our brothers Amen. and sisters. Amen. Because Amen. I will never be perfect. Mm. And those pastors, whoever they are, mm. what we see, we've seen over the years on mm. television and on radio and wherever, mm. we are only seeing the good side. Yeah. When he, why doesn't he record when he gets home? Why mm. doesn't he record or have a live feed when he's with his family? Mm. We don't see that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But I don't want to move judgment away from me. Yeah. And I don't have the right to judge them. Yeah, I'm course. just working it out as, uh -huh. as a human being mm. and calculating these things. And I believe that's what brought me yeah. um, to this decision to say, you know what, Lord, but I know mm. as a human being and as a man of God that I did wrong. Yeah. Because how do you even... I can sit here now mm. because of the experience that I went through yeah. trying to take my own life mm -hmm. and failed. Yeah. But at that time when I was trying, mm. I did not know that it will get to this point. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because at that time, the failure, the disappointment, mm. yo, the disgrace, mm. the discouragement. Mm. You know, the devil is, is yo, he's so conniving that Mm. He puts all of these things. How are you going to face your family? Mm. How are you going to face the church? Mm. How are you going to face the next day? Mm. And all of these things play in your mind. And especially with me. Mm. I, I'm the type of person I like to, I sit and calculate things. And I believe I, I need to work things out. Yeah. And that was the old me. Yeah, that yeah. was the old me. The old you, yeah. And that's why the devil could come and whisper these things in AI, my ears. In years and, and I believe I'm not the only one. O mm. All of us go through that. Yeah. You understand? But for me, mm. I had to go through this experience. Mm. And that is what led me to make that decision because it wasn't me. Mm. I just came to the point that, Lord, I, I cannot fix this. Mm. Mm. I have disappointed you. 
I've disappointed my wife and my children. Mm. I've disappointed the ministry. Mm -hmm. So right now, the only thing that I can do is give up. The only thing that seems right mm. is to give up. Let, let, let it just go. Yeah. You know? Mm. And that was my purpose as I walked into the sea. Mm. To say, Lord, and I, I firmly believe saying this, mm. and I remember saying this, that Lord, as much as I'm sorry, mm. but this is the only way to end it. To end it for me because I cannot see in my mind how I'm going to get through this. Man of God, I thought many people may have a questions that you are more than welcome. Numbers are going to be on the screen. Yes. Uh, just comment or question, whatever you want to, how you feel like yes. uh, interacting with us, you are more than welcome. Uh, Minister Peters, his number will be on your screen as well. Yes. You you might be going through the same situation, thinking of same situation, thinking about going to the same situation, thinking about taking the same decision. Yes. And uh, I wish and I believe, and if you can also ask the end, and uh, the Lord has taken you from that and uses uh, the, 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 the people to come and rescue him. Yes. Man of God, I think we'll be going to, to Woodbridge, whereby you you've been rescued yes and uh, in short what i just want to take you through the process yes here at what what happened what happened to in the me? middle of there and then what did you see yes how did you come out so <laughs> in i remember walking into to the water and mm. communicating with god and by the time though i was already chest high in, mm. in the water yeah um i just said lord this is it and then um, I carried on walking and mm. don't ask me how but I just carried on mm. and I remember going down um, underneath the water yeah. and I came up again and I said Lord I'm sorry and I went down and as I came to it was like I was I was I wasn't with I wasn't together mm. I wasn't within myself yes, as we are yes. talking yeah, you're now. Like a split. and I woke up and I'm underneath the water and I just saw the, the bubbles mm. as if I'm trying to breathe underneath the water yeah and then I came up mm -hmm. and uh, I said Lord sure I, I I don't think I'll be able to do this mm. and I turned and I looked at the buildings behind me yeah and I realized how far I was mm. and I said Lord I won't make it back mm. and as I turned back I saw for those of you that know Lagoon Beach and the Atlantic Ocean in Milnerton, mm. we have all these container ships that come into Pardon Island to come and offload. Yeah. And as I turned, I saw the ship in front of me. And that's when I realized how far Yo. the ocean had taken me. Mm. Mm. Between these two birds, there was this yellow circle, but, a, but it was clear on the inside, just the complete yellow circle. Mm. And then I went, I was gone again. I lost, I mm -hmm. lost consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what I remember. Mm. Because the next time that I gained consciousness, mm. um, I was being pulled out at uh, Woodbridge Island, which is almost two kilometers from where we are sitting right now. Mm -hmm. And according to the, the lifeguards that came out on the boat, Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't remember how far in, but the, the current had taken me two kilometers away from here, mm. where we are sitting now. Yeah. And that's where I gained consciousness because um, they came, apparently I'd been in the water for over an hour because mm. they were looking for, for me. Um, Fortunately, also they had to come and fetch. There was one of the guys at uh, Lagoon Beach that yeah. saw me walking in and they came and picked him up and he just took them on the trail. That's how mm -hmm. they, they found me. But they, they pulled me out at, at Woodbridge Island, mm -hmm. um, the lifeguards, and that's where they, they resuscitated me and I came, mm -hmm. I, ca I gained my consciousness again. And Hello, mommy. Yes. You say? Yeah, yeah, sure, he's a... Come again. Oh. 
Okay, uh, they do have also FNB, eh? Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, but set up with a do have FNB as well. Set up point. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay, no, no problem. Yeah, he's on top, yeah, okay. Mm. Okay, no problem. Mm. Mm, sorry about that. No problem. Mm. He was, was sending me to go and see someone in the pay agently. Mm. Yeah, you can go through. Yeah, so the most difficult thing to, to understand and the mm the shock and the surprise to, to everybody mm. was being in this ice water we know that the Atlantic Ocean mm. is extremely cold and where I was and where the current had taken me to mm. but most importantly for more than an hour and still being able to testify today mm. in itself um, the people at Woodbridge there where we're going you'll see whenever I walk there they, they, they cannot believe that this man is alive. Mm. That mm. in itself is, is a testimony for me and a miracle that only God knows because he knew that he could still fix it. Yeah, yeah. It's not within my hands and the mm. testimony today is it doesn't matter what the situation is. Mm. It doesn't matter what you are facing. Mm. God is always in control. in control. Amen. It's up to us to leave it with Him. Make the decision to say, Lord, you take control. Mm -hmm. You take control and believe me, as I'm sitting with you here today, mm. it's, it's my testimony and so many people that know me, my wife looks at me every day and say, you know, I still cannot believe that you are sitting here because if the lifeguards and the sea patrol mm. their word and their test or their word to us and to my wife was it should have taken 10 minutes for your husband to die especially in this cold especially ocean especially in this cold ocean i am a good man after 10 he said after 10 minutes mm. if we find the body is dead and 60% of the time we do not find the body mm, mm, mm. because the current can take you all the way mm. up uh, up north as far as uh, the Kubak power station and sometimes even further. Mm, mm, mm. Man of God, it was really my pleasure to have you and listen to this testimonial. I know many people, you, you are more than welcome to call yes, yes. and uh, we do want to spend uh, more, time. more, more time to tell you in deep, deep details what's really happening. But in short, you, you hear or you heard what the man of God said to us today. It's a calling he's telling you right now, no matter what you're going through. Yes. I know there is always a way out with Jesus. Yes. Only him, him alone can do what a human being cannot do. Yes. What yourself you cannot do. What you will try to fix. Yourself. Don't if yourself, you can. You, you, you think you can, but you cannot. Yes. Because you do not have the power, the authority over your life. The small you are power, not in control of your life. That's the way that we can just understand right That's now. It. You are not in control of your life. Men of God, I would like you to pray yes. for a sister, a brother, a, brother. a minister, a, 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 a pastor, a servant, a president, a minister of this world, a department, yes. a CEO. Is any position manager, a leader, who can listen to us watching at this video, is stuck. He lost everything. He does not know what to do. Yes. He's preparing, he's planning before the year, mm. or maybe coming next year he to end his know. life. Yes. Can you do a word of encouragement or a prayer for yes. for them, this particular group? Yeah. They have said that no, we can't take it anymore. Yeah. My, my final words before I do, I do pray for you, mm. um, family of God, and my brothers and sisters in, in Christ. I've had to go through this time, and it's still a time of healing and allowing God to take control of every decision 
that I make and every decision that needs to be made. But the most important thing for you where you are today, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter what the situation is. The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. God is not finished with you. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the last thing that you do, give God the opportunity to take over. To take over. Allow God, even if it is a simple prayer and say, Lord, I know that my relationship with you has not been good or I, I'm not even a Christian. I'm just coming to you to say, Lord, just, just do what you need to do. I've listened to a testimony. I believe that if you can do it for my brother, you can do it for me. Be God, because God in his word, he says, he's not a respecter of persons. In other words, he doesn't do one thing for one specific person and not for the other. Mm, 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 mm. So allow God the opportunity of what your situation is to bring it back to life. And do not, I plead with you today, do not allow the devil to play with your mind and tell you that suicide is the final answer because it isn't. Mm -hmm. God has a plan and a purpose for your life and I'm going to commit your life, your decisions over to God right now and ask God to send the angels and the Holy Spirit into your home, into your office, into your business, into your life. Today, as you allow Him the opportunity to take control. So Father God, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity that we could share, that we could share your word and the testimony of life that you have given me. Father, the testimony of yet another chance. Father God, thank you that you are more than victorious. Thank you that you are the great I am. Father, I commit my brothers and sisters to you today that are sitting at the edge today. They are sitting and wondering and thinking that the final decision is for me to commit suicide. The final thing is for me to give up. The final thing is to walk away from my, my, my marriage, is to walk out of my home, is to leave my business because it has failed. I, I've made wrong decisions. I don't know how I'm going to fix it. Forget about me, I, how, when, where. Forget about those questions. Because today, the Holy Spirit will visit you right where you are. As you make that decision, in a five second prayer, simply say, Lord, I hand it over. And Father, we honor your word. And we ask that you send the angels of heaven mm. into each and every home, each and every office, mm. each and every marriage to my brothers and sisters where they find themselves across this earth today. Let your miracle working power take control of their lives in the same way that you took control of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I bind that spirit of confusion, mm. that spirit of, of doubt, of fear, of disappointment, of discouragement. I bind it today in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak life, life over my brothers and sisters in Jesus' mighty name. May the peace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I got your contacts. If anybody wants to contact you on social media, for instance. Yes, they, they are welcome to contact me. I have an email address. It's Daryl, my name, D-A-R-R-Y-L, Peters, P-E-T-E-R-S, 1703 at gmail.com. And my mobile number is plus 27. Seven four seven four three double seven three four. You are welcome to email me. You are welcome to WhatsApp me. 
you are welcome to call me if you have any questions I am here to pray with you I am here to encourage you no. that's it man of God it was thank really you. a pleasure thank you so much this part of your busy schedule but uh, you have given us like a few like a half an hour to speak to the people of God around yes, the world yes. we know that uh, Anybody gonna watch this video or this uh, this show will be really really touched. Yes. You know, a man of God rescued from a suicidal decision. God taking me from the ocean sea here in Cape Town. Sure. Today is a living testimonial. Yes. Today it's possible. If he did it for him, he can also he do, can for do you. it for you. And he won't you don't do need to end your life in alcohol. You don't need to end your life in drugs. In drugs. You don't need to end your life in prostitution. No. It's it's gonna that pass by. It will, that's too it will pass, pass by. It in short time. You'll have a short expiring peace, expiring joy. Yes. But come to Jesus. He's gonna give you unlimited, unkept joy. Unkept. Unkept peace. Yes. Unlimited happiness Absolutely. that we are seeking in the world. Amen. Because money cannot buy money everything. Money cannot buy happiness. Money cannot buy happiness. Money, money buy that peace. you have, your luxury cannot buy joy. Oh, hallelujah. Only Jesus Christ, whoever believes in him shall not perish, yes. but we have eternal life. Thank you so much hallelujah. for tuning in. May God bless you. Thank you so much for Hesse Promises, Millington family. Yes. Thank you so much to Pastor Dominic somewhere and Mama Annie Mama somewhere. Annie somewhere. Thank you for all entire leadership of Hesse Promises, Millington here in Cape Town. Yes. 13 Marine Drive in Cape Town. You can still come and Visit join us. us. Join us. Visit us and worship with us. You are more than welcome. Thank you to all your prayers. Yes. Without your prayer, we couldn't have this man of God alive Amen. today. Amen. Stay blessed. Until next time. God, God bless, bless you. God bless. Cheers.